to you a little bit about the um, SAO outreach program and uh, the things we do here. Um, this is a nice image taken in Sutherland uh, by Steve Potter, who's one of the um, astronomers here. There's a large group of people that are involved in outreach at the observatory. We have a, a designated outreach department, but we also have several astronomers and software engineers and things that are also interested and they often help out um, the department. So we've got four main aims in the department. One is um, aimed at STEM education, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Technology transfer, that's more aimed at um, sort of tertiary education level um, and sort of things like vocational qualifications, so things not just astronomy but also engineering. So we also do a lot of um, internships here at the observatory for mechanical, electrical engineering, that sort of thing as well. Public engagement, so not only are we aiming at learners and school children, we're also aiming to bring astronomy to the general public, to raise the awareness of astronomy to the general public. And something here, socio-economic development. Um, this is something that was quite a focus, I think, with the, with the previous director of our division. Um, and that's Kevin Bond, who's gone on to form the OAD, the Office, um, International Office for Development of Astronomy. Um, so we, this has taken a little bit more of a back seat now because that's moved over to them, but we're still, we're still actively involved in that as well. So I thought for those of you who want to sleep through the rest of the talk, I'll just give you the numbers and then you can uh, have a rest. So we've got, what I've done here is I've set up the number, of, basically the number of people we've reached from January. Um, in Cape, Cape Town, Sutherland, and also by the EU UNAWI project. So the EU UNAWI project um, is a project that's aimed at very young learners, from four to ten year olds. Um, it's a project that was initially set up in the EU, and we have um, a designated worker here in South Africa, um, Troshni Neju, who also works for this um, non-profit organization. So she's based at the observatory, so, but we count her statistics uh, in our reports, but I've separated them out so, so you can see where they come in. So if we talk about learners, by far we're, we're sort of most effective in, in Cape Town. We've got about eight, eight and a half thousand reached so far this year. In terms of educator training, so teacher training, this is a focus for um, Troshni and EU Nawi. She's reached over 2,500 teachers this year, which is incredible. Um, and then in terms of the public, Sutherland basically dominates um, where, where we reach the most public. It's nearly 9,000 people reached this year, and that's official tour figures. So that's a very um, low estimate of the numbers because we, we, we only count in people who go on to official tours. If you just walk in and don't take a tour, you're, you're not counted. So this gives you, we basically reach about, say, 9,000 pub public um, in Sutherland and about 2,500 public in Cape Town, and that's through our Open Night program. So <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give you a few highlights um, and just outline the things that we do, um, just brief summaries. So one of the things that we're working on at the moment for learners are, are resource development. So the sorts of things that we've put together are things like a cultural story package for teachers. So that's specifically um, Southern African star lore tales, things like the moon hare and the tortoise, the hopeless hunter, and the crocodile who swallowed the sun. All of these are at their four to ten age group, um, and they're, they're learner and educator resources. So they're for teachers, packs, and also educator um, <coughs> activities. The book, The Seasons, has also been put together for primary school learners to explain the basically um, why we have winter, summer, uh, different hemispheres, and that kind of thing. Um, now here's an example here um, where we've got someone from outside the department to help us. Mm -hmm. Robert Stryden is a mechanical engineer at SALT, and we basically asked him to build a giant steel protractor for us so that we can um, develop human ORIs. ORIs and, um, and to, to use those in Sutherland and Cape Town. So here's an example where we're working with other members of, of um, the observatory. And then Bruno Latati, who's a um, postdoc here, he's been working um, on developing audio visual materials. So a lot of the um, engineers and astronomers 
a very keen amateur astrophotographers. Um, and we've, we've got beautiful images of Sutherland, obviously because if they go and work up there, they've got access to some of the darkest skies in the world. And so they, they're often, we've got videos and things. And they've been basically kept in people's own inboxes and their own um, computers. And what we're trying to do is get all those things together and, and use them in the visitor center and, and use them. So, so this is something Bruno's been working on. Sorry. Specifically, what, what, what is a human RE? It's basically um, you, um, you can use yourself to make a um, sundial. Okay. So you're like with the shadows, you, you're standing in it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the bread and butter of our sort of um, it, of our department is really looking at learner and teacher or educator workshops. That's the bread and butter of the things we do in terms of. Um, education. This is an example, I don't know, <clears throat> here's an image taken on the side of Table Mountain, you might recognise of those hikers at the back. Um, and, just, and I wanted to put this picture on because I wanted to illustrate that you can do outreach in the day as well as night. Obviously with a lot of learners in the townships, we, we go out to the townships, but it's very difficult for them to come to us at night. And so it's quite, we, so we have a bit of a logistical problem if we want to teach astronomy to, to those the poorest communities. So we can do a lot of things with telescopes in the daytime as well. You don't need to point at a star, you can just point at some object of interest and they just still enjoy just interacting and, and using the telescope. So this year we've reached 15,318 learners um, through our educator workshop program. Sorry, learner workshop program. Teacher training program. I've got about 2,700 2,767 reached this year, and this is um, a group of teachers um, undergoing um, training on how to make little mini um, telescopes. There's also binoculars there. This is a typical workshop. We also run this workshop with the children themselves. So here's a few. Basically, the, the, the workshops are generally held on site. But one of the problems we've encountered this year is there's new regulations in the Western Cape where schools um, have to get, I think it's six weeks notice from the Department of Education in order to schedule a visit off-site. So this has significantly reduced the number of schools that are coming to us because of all the paperwork, etc. So we've tried to, we tried to get over that by going out um, to the schools. And this is an example. Um, in the Northern Cape, over eight in April, we went out to Sutherland, Willison, and Fraserburgh, focusing on grades eight and nine. We took a planetarium show. We did this in conjunction with the Cape Town Science Centre. We had teacher workshops, stargazing, and also a computer workshop at the Sutherland Community Centre. So, um, this is as part of kind of like the socio-economic development in Sutherland. Um, we've basically set up um, a centre where children can go and do their homework. We've set up a computer centre and we also got volunteers from the observatory to staff the centre to give computer training. So this is something where we're trying to raise the skill set of the, of the people in Sutherland. And during this roadshow, we reached 274 people. That's just in like two days, basically. <coughs> Something that was um, introduced this year is a new competition which we're going to be running annually. It's the Astro Essay Competition. This is aimed at grade 10 to 12 learners, and we only opened it up to the Western Cape this year. And they had a choice of four um, essays that they could write about. So, what I love most about astronomy, what does astronomy bring to civil so society? A discussion of one historical important event and the influence of stars and planets on, on our culture, <coughs> which I thought were quite difficult subjects, actually. Um, and so we had the finals for, um, four um, candidates uh, come to the observatory in September, and we had an overall tie here. This is uh, Bazani Kumalo, who's our um, outreach officer. So this is something that's just been launched this year and we're hoping to repeat that annually and eventually roll it out nationally. And talking of things that have, um, are sort of rolling out nationally, 
Um, this is an astronomy quiz which we've been running for several years now. And at the moment, um, it's just in the Western and Northern Capes. <coughs> and we have, every year we have a competition and different schools get involved and they usually have the finals. We go out to the finals and the winner gets a prize. Now this year, we've actually offered the quiz online. So this significantly expanding the reach of the quiz. We can time the quiz, because the, when we do it in, in, in person, we, they are only given a certain amount of time to answer the questions, so we time the quiz online. And we can also schedule the quiz for a specific date so that there's no unfairness and people don't find out the, the, what the questions are before they sit there um, their quiz. Um, and this is uh, compatible with any computer or internet and also smartphones. With most of the, I think it's something like um, over 80% of people in southern Africa connect to the internet through their phone. So this is an, it can enable us to reach much, many more people, especially in the rural areas. So next year, we're going to be rolling this out to the, the rest of the Western Cape and, and Northern Cape schools. At the moment, we've only reached about 100 schools in the Western Cape. And uh, once we've expanded to the Western Cape and Northern Cape, the next step is to, is to again go nas national with this. Um, and this has been a fantastically successful program. And this is driven by um, Veronique uh, Kazir Ravat, who's um, basically our sort of education slash computer person in the division. And she's really driven this um, fantastically well. It's been very successful. Now, as well as going out and giving workshops, we also take part in um, exhibitions, several exhibitions, in which we incorporate workshops. SciFest is something that we go to every year. SciFest 2012, we had 338 learners um, attending workshops. So the workshops involve cosmic collisions, sunshine and sunbeams, and astro rocks. So it's really, it's all related to the, the national curriculum. So it's um, things like the Sun, Earth, Moon system, um, asteroids, and uh, the solar system. Now here on the left here you can see our exhibition stand. This is um, Tim Bella, who's an, a member of our department, um, explaining to the small children here. And, in, and the total visit to the exhibition was 772. We, we counted them. And here on the right here is... Um, Sibiyule, who's our head of division, um, and he's basically got the kids there lined up in the solar system. Try to make the, the workshops as fun and interactive as possible. Um, so that's the sort of bread and butter of things that we do for learners. Going on to things like stargazing activities, they're aimed at both learners and also the general public. Um, so here's some examples here, and I just love this girl's face. She's all, all in their night clothes, ready for bed straight after. It's very clever. So just uh, some examples recently this, this year. Uh, we went out to St. Mary's Primary School in February, and there were 687 people there. It's just amazing. Um, we also, just to show you that you don't have to go into really dark areas, we went to um, the Promenade Shopping Centre in Mitchell's Plain, and trust me, there's a lot of light pollution there. There about 70 people interested there. So it's really just trying to just raise awareness and... and bring astronomy to the forefront of people's, the public's mind. In Sutherland, um, we've got our visitor centre and the, and the salt tour set up, basically. Here's an image of salt, and here's an image of the model of salt we have in our visitor centre. The tour stats for the year to date, 6,938. So that's a lowball um, estimate of the numbers who were on tours in Sutherland this year. And basically, if you go on a tour, you get a tour of salt. You also get a tour of other telescopes on the plateau. Um, and there are different tour options. So that's the, sort of the bargain basement tour. Then you can have the enhanced tour where we, we have an engineer who explains a little bit more in depth about the telescope and how it works. Um, but there's also entry, you can just go into the visitor center for free if you don't want to go on a tour and just walk around. So we try to make it as accessible for everybody as possible. Um, obviously it is in the middle of nowhere, so the, the types of um, communities that we reach are, are generally not the poorest communities, which is something that we're, we're aiming at here at the observatory, but there's, there's really nothing you can do about um, the location of salt, you can't move it. So. 
In Cape Town, <coughs> our main focus for um, engaging the public is with our open nights. They're held on the second and fourth Saturday of every month. Um, there's usually a lecture at 8 sharp, and that's followed by a tour of the museum on site, um, tour of the library, um, and then there's stargazing in the Maclean and also with smaller telescopes out on the lawns. Um, here's uh, Christian Hethlager, who basically mans the, the fort every single weekend without a fail, um, and this is ill. Um, and just introducing the library here. I don't know if you've had a, a tour of the site as part of the symposium, but I would highly recommend it if you can find someone to show you around. Um, and this year we've, we've got about 1,300 or so visitors through our um, doors. The main problem here, again, is logistics. It's a, it's a, it's a Saturday night. Um, and in terms of reaching the poorer communities, there's no public transport. Um, so that's why we have initiated the stargazing out, so out in the township. So we go out to Langer and Mitchell's Plain and everything to, so that we can try to, to reach as, as many people as possible. And then just going to briefly mention the services to the wider community. Um, so things like we have an online almanac. We get a lot of phone calls from the press and the media and the public at the observatory. And I deal with those. Um, it can range from anything from... I saw a light in the sky, what was it, to my friend wants to build an extension to their conservatory, how is it going to affect the sun that comes in my house, um, to there was a crime committed on this date and he said that the moon was full, was it full on this date? So there's a whole range of, of queries you get there and then obviously with the press, if anything is in the, in the, in the news, you're going to get asked about it. Um, the Muslim community we do a lot of work for them in, with the crescent moon predictions. Um, and here is the crescent moon seen from space. So I thought I'd just give you a little alternate view there. Now, Cedric, as a member of our department, wanted me to specifically mention an upcoming event because he's very excited about it. Uh, we've got this Tuesday, actually, we've got um, the first African American female um, astronaut, Dr. M M May Jemison visiting. She's going to be visiting, visiting the observatory and also going around to UCT and UWC. Um, she, and as part of her visit, she'll be um, giving a talk to um, a number of learners and things from the, from the local area. So we're very excited to have her. Unfortunately, I'll be going up to Sutherland on that date. So I've asked my partner to try and get her autograph instead. And so I'm just going to finish up by um, talking about the future and, and the, the, the possibilities that we have. So one thing that I've started uh, work on is, um, is trying to develop e-learning material, to try to develop um, classroom material online. And I'm, I've contacted um, Sia Villa, which is a Cape Town non-profit organisation. Um, they produce things like um, free online textbooks for schools. So when there's all these problems with textbooks not arriving or being burnt, they can just go and print one out. Um, and they cover grades, at the moment, grades 10 to 12 in um, the science curriculum. So we're going to be working with Sia Villa to develop specific astronomy um, curriculum-related resources because they've got all the pipelines to automatically get the, get the documents in the correct format and everything. So that's really exciting. Um, this is something that Ian Glass is heavily involved in and the Friends of the Observatory. And that's we're trying to get the um, observatory um, basically listed, uh, basically a heritage listing, because what we want to do is we want to basically expand our, our tours that we do. We've got a number of domes and facilities on site which are in a poor state of repair. Um, but we don't have the funding from within the observatory to repair them. So we're obviously we're trying to get um, outside funding, and that's very difficult to do if you're not listed. So we're trying to get that pushed through so we can then um, approach lenders and um, perhaps even lottery funding, that kind of thing, to try and um, restore a lot of the um, buildings on site and possibly open that up then to, for tours for the public. Um, and then the, the other major... Thing for next year is basically the, the online rollout of the Astro Quiz um, within, the within the Northern and Western Capes and then nationally. And this is obviously involving a, a great deal of work to do that. So these are kind of the three key things that are, we're initially sort of getting ready for next year. 
And I just wanted to finish, finish up saying, it's not all work, work, work. As I said, I mentioned a little bit about socio-economic development. The staff at the observatory are heavily involved in the community in Sutherland, from helping with soup kitchens to helping at Christmas parties. We actually organise Christmas parties for the children there, the staff buy presents, etc. So we really do try to be a part of the Sutherland community and to help um, people there. And I just wanted to finish you with, finish up with this. This is I told I did mention on my first slide. This is something that Bruno. He's made a number of these um, videos. Um, he's put, put them on his Facebook page, and I've sort of asked him for them. And these are all going to be used up in the Sutherland uh, Visitor Centre. So when people come, they've got sort of odd, more exciting things than the Power of Ten video from 1970 or whatever, which is currently playing. So we're really making a, a conscious drive to update the resources in the Sutherland Centre, especially taking advantage of the wonderful pa panoramas and things that we have locally. We don't have to get international videos. We've got enough of our own stuff, so that's what we're trying to do. So thank you for listening. Thank you.